Uh, now, for some of us, the Easter weekend will involve two things, the sofa and lots of chocolate. Uh, for my next guest, it will mark the end of training and the start of a challenge to run the equivalent of 39 marathons in just 33 days. Why? To give hope to the 1.2 million children who are trafficked each and every year. Guy Hacking, Tom Stancliffe and Rob uh, Martin, who join me now in the studio, and you won't just be tackling this challenge on your own, with you, will you? So part of this uh, publicity drive is to get people to join you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is certainly started with the idea of just the three of us, and, and actually it's grown pretty massively since then. It's now over 200 runners from across Europe. But they pick just sections of the route, yeah? Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, some people are joining for 250 miles for Spokans, others are coming through the last day into Dubrovnik. So okay, we'll just take mix. you through the route. Um, the challenge will begin at Odessa in Ukraine, and from there they will run just over 200 miles, crossing Moldova to reach the, the city of Brilo in Romania just six days later. From there, it's off to Bucharest with the team hoping to cover around 30 miles a day. Next, it's over to the border to Bulgaria before running through Macedonia to Kosovo, then Montenegro, finishing up in Dubrovnik in Croatia. That's a thousand miles in just 33 days. So what sort of training goes into something like this? Because you can't train the whole <laughs> thing, all this thing. No, sadly not. Um, I think the key is getting a lot of time on our feet with backpacks. We'll be carrying yeah. sort of eight, nine kilos. Whilst it's, you're working? So this is in the mornings and the evenings? In the mornings, in the evenings, lots of weekends, um, and trying to get distance under our belt. And the longest run we've done to date in a single day is 55 miles. We've done lots of 30 milers. And then, yeah, it's early mornings um, through the winter and, and after work in the evenings. And be honest, <laughs> at what point did you think, I can't do this? Um, during the training? Yes. At about 4 a.m. at Marble Arch in January, <laughs> the snow coming down. It's been a cold down. January for people around the world. <laughs> and we were setting off to Oxford, which was 55 miles. Yeah. And uh, I'm not sure the day got much better, but yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been tough, but it's been fun, and we can't wait to get out there. You have had a lot of support, so that presumably is what keeps you going. Yeah, absolutely. I and mean, it's been amazing from start to finish. I mean, we started with a, a launch party in November. We raised you know, a, a large sum of money already there. And we're well, well on our way to making our 150 grand target, and, and certainly that's 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 what we're hoping to do to to raise this money to become to create this first safe house rehabilitation centre for trafficked children in the UK. What was it that made you want to choose that cause? Is it something specific that shocked you or upset you? What was it? Well, what what brought it to our attention was the the Rochdale, um, the trafficking that was in the grooming that was happening in Rochdale. This is a, a, a British town where we had, it was a yeah, it's a grooming story basically. Exactly. Yeah, and I, I think, you know, we'd, we'd read so much over the last year about exploitation of children yeah. and trafficking all across Europe. Um, and we met the charity Love 146, who told us about the really inspirational work they're doing to provide support to children that have been trafficked. So ultimately, this is a positive thing, a community of people coming together to have a great adventure and try and do something to help. And, you know, everyone's very excited about uh, that. You, uh, some controversy, perhaps, because uh, you're reflecting the problem in the route as well, aren't you? To a certain extent, I mean, there's the, the problem is two pronged. If there's there's both the demand in the countries where the people yeah. are being trafficked to, and there's also supply. And these countries are, you know, suffering from it. But equally, it's, it's not only that, and the the issue is global. Mm. And and certainly, you know, it's 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 an issue that we need to tackle worldwide. And this is not a finger pointing yeah. at those areas. But certainly, you know, they are they suffer a lot as well. And in terms of the physical exercise, you're doing more than a marathon a day aren't you averaging so in terms of energy levels how do you ex how are you sort of what are you eating and how are you surviving during the the course of it well, I think if <laughs> lots of people are you trying to do something like this you'd be on energy gels you'd be yeah. on energy bars and that stuff we're not going to have that out there we're going to be dependent on what we get we're staying in villages for lots of the time i think it's going to be local food yeah. um and yeah, we're just going to have to adapt to that, I suppose. You've got to trust those local We're going to trust. Well, I think the food's great, actually, out there. I think it's going to be lots of kind of storage and energy, yeah. and it'll actually be a perfect thing for and us. It's a combination of, uh, combination of that and some, some hardcore antibiotics to yeah. make sure it knocks any stomach issues. Blisters issue are often the problem, aren't they? It sounds really yeah. simple, but how do you prepare for that? Yeah. I'm, well, I'm, I'm a bit of the joke of the group because I tape up every single one of my toes. And <laughs> <laughs> but the other guys, they're, they're sort of more solid than me, and we just manage to keep on going. Um, and the... Uh, Lots of, uh, we've got lots, we've been madly downloading audio books and music to deal with the long days on okay, the road, yeah. actually. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> uh, hopefully uh, that'll, you know, blind us to the And pain. what have you learned about each other during this intensive <laughs> exercise? We've all got to be very stubborn. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a pre-requirement yeah. to, to be able to get through it. But, um, 
also, I mean, that's camaraderie. I mean, we did we did a race together last year, the Marathon de Saab through the desert, and we got on really well and actually enjoyed that peculiarly. And um, <laughs> and certainly, you know, well, we'll get to know each other even better when Absolutely. we're sort of huddled in a tent in the side of the road. Well, you're all mad, but it's a great cause and very good luck, and we'll follow your progress. Thank you very much.